What's up, y'all? your girl, Sakina, and I'm back with another review. This is my review for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. This is season 13, episode 11, I think. <laughs> yeah, it is 11. New hat alert, okay? Listen, I am using all accessories that were in my closet, okay? We are turning a new leaf in 2024. We are doing new things, new experiences, wearing new things, you know, all things new, right? So here we are. I'm, I'm definitely giving... 90s vibes you know even though this is a sharpa hat i'm not sure if they were doing sharpa back then but you know i'm feeling like ll cool j you feel me and that's just what it is like i said you know maybe tomorrow maybe in my next review well no i gotta do miami after this and i ain't changing no clothes you feel me so that's not gonna happen but maybe uh for potomac i'll put some effort in how i look and i'll give y'all a new hat you know but we are here and let's go ahead and get into it y'all by the way y'all probably won't even notice this but my lip is freaking swollen i had a very rough night last night i don't know what it was but it started with back pain and then into the night my stomach started hurting so i had a stomach and back combination i was tossing and turning all night and then i woke up to a swollen lip now it seemed to have gone down a little bit but when i tell y'all i was like this literally i was like look my lip it looks like i'm pouting and i could really feel it right here more than anything but you girl just had a rough night and hopefully i don't need a nap because i don't want to take a nap i want to do some other stuff today so hopefully i don't take a nap it's my off day you know at the corporate job so i want to do some other things i'm not trying to be in, in a bad sleep because i got lack of sleep but anywho let's go ahead and get into this review right so it starts off with kyle at the house crystal comes over and then we find out that they're actually getting ready to do a day trip to oha never heard of this place so i'm very excited to see what it gives because sutton has a friend that has an estate that they're going to and they're going to be doing wine tasting and things of that sort so i really feel like this is going to be a nice place and you know i'm very into geography so i do need to look it up on the map to see where it is and what's the surrounding areas you know i'm very into geography um fun facts about me anywho um yeah so they're doing this trip because Kyle wants to show Annalise a good time for her birthday. Every time she's around the women, it's, you know, drama. We got introduced to her at the weed party. And then uh, Crystal's, no, that wasn't, was that Taco Tuesday? No, that was Sutton's event that she was uh, at where, you know, drama was just everywhere around. Well, I'm like, welcome to Housewives, Annalise. If you're going to be a part of the group, this is what it's going to be, okay? Y'all are going to have dinners where y'all argue and things of that nature. But luckily, this franchise does have a balance, so you can have drama and laugh all at the same time. Um, but yeah, get with the program, man, because this is what she joined, and I don't understand why Kyle is doing this in the name of her always being around when drama is, you know, in action. But... Also, did nobody tell her to go to Hawaii for three weeks and miss out on stuff? That don't have nothing to do with y'all. But anyway, we going to Oha, okay? And on the way there, Sutton and Garcelle are talking. And Garcelle is telling Sutton that she had a conversation with Dorit. And, and Sutton wants to know, well, did y'all come to any understanding? She was like, we just moving on, okay? Basically, there wasn't much of understanding when it comes down to Dorit, but we're just moving forward, okay? That is a good thing that Dorit, I mean, that Garcelle likes about the group. They can have their issues and still, you know, have a good time. Listen here. I'm just interested to see how this trip is going to go. So all the girls are at Kyle's house at this point, minus Erica. Erica got that, sh okay? She got C-19. And I'm like, dang. The fact that this, we got introduced to this, like almost four years ago at this point y'all march of 2024 will make it four years of the pandemic do you see how fast time flies but do you remember the chaos that we experienced in 2020 it's just crazy right and four years later it's still around <laughs> i just thought it was gonna be something that was just you know 
At the time, I think that we all were, you know, scared forever. But by 2021, we was just like, you know, we got this, all right? We know how to manage. We know how to keep this all under control. At this point, we all deduced it down to the flu, okay? Just just the new flu. Despite all the um, different variants that had came out, child, we weren't stunting no more. But my stepdad had got it right after Christmas. Um, the guy I'm dating got it after Christmas. And then um, my mom got sick. Obviously, she had it too. She just didn't want to claim it. And I seen a few people during New Year saying that that's how they were bringing the New Year in because they were sick. I'm like, dang, it's really... Yeah. One thing about it though, your girl beat the odds, okay? With a household that was sick and then coming here with somebody who was sick, I reign supreme, hence why I have the crowns on my shirts, okay? The queen being the queen being, all right? So yes, she got COVID, so she couldn't come and um, at this point, they all get in the Sprinter and they're riding out. So um, Annalise is very excited that the women are doing this for her. It's crazy that I keep calling her Annalise. And it's just like, I don't know why Anna Marie is just so hard for me to say. Annalise just came out one day and it just stuck. Anyway. She's very grateful that the women are doing this for her. She said that her and Sutton got off on a rocky start, but, you know, she's just willing to see where it goes. I'm like, well, speaking of Sutton, Sutton tells the ladies that she went on a date and the guy likes karaoke so much so where he asked her for a second date. Okay, they have been texting back and forth. They've been in communication. But I don't have too many high hopes for this by the reunion because I did watch the after show, something that I typically don't do, but I was looking for something to watch the other day and I just so happened to watch the after show for last week's episode. And Garcelle was like, wasn't he texting you a lot? I don't think that she likes the fact, Sutton likes the fact that he was texting her a lot. And I don't think that it went any further to the point of being him still being around at the reunion. But um, yeah, she got her second date and I don't know if we're going to be able to see that, but shout out to Sutton. So the ladies get to Oha and they're doing some shopping. Uh, Some of the ladies went into this olive oil shop. I know some people drink olive oil. This is girl that I see on Instagram. She always drinks olive oil. She is, you know, but I'm like, I don't, I don't want to drink that. But you know, when I was young, I did used to, um, you know, drink cod liver oil, you know? So I, I guess it's no different from that. But regardless, yeah, they're in this place. The lady at the store speaks Italian, you know, deleting her privilege, you know, she's speaking Italian with her. And Crystal gonna tell Sutton, oh my gosh, this lady's gonna be here for seven hours. <laughs> Cause you know, she's long-winded. Dorit is very long-winded. I thought it was funny that Crystal said seven hours because it made me think about my nephew. <laughs> He always says uh, seven hours for any time. You know, he's five now, but he doesn't really have a good concept of uh, time. And he's like, oh my gosh, I've been hungry for seven hours. He's like, okay, sure, you've been hungry for seven hours. In all reality, you've probably been hungry for like 30 minutes. Okay, relax. Then you got Annalise, Garcelle, and Kyle. They're at this one shop, but before they land on an actual store Kyle wants to go into basically every store and Garcelle was like I, 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 no 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 so they finally go into one store Annalise is asking who does the most shopping out of the girls in the group I was gonna say Dorit but it's actually Kyle and Kyle in her confessional goes in on this list of places where she likes to shop you know she buys something every day she just loves it and I was like, damn, okay. And then, you know, we get a price point. You know, I know a lot of people have been wondering, you know, we like to see the luxury, how much somebody paid for something and things of that nature. But one thing about it, we always get that with Beverly Hills. So Kyle is finding things and she's just placing them on the counter. Her total comes up to $500. Now, one thing I didn't like, Kyle, that you do need to get together, when she handed the cashier her car, she placed it on the counter. Like she kind of slapped it on the counter instead of handing it to her. I think that's very rude. And that's something that she needs to be mindful of. Hand your car over, sis, okay? So they get to this farm vineyard and it's really nice. The thing that I really like about California is that it's just very lush when it comes down to the land. And um, Kyle is saying that she is just so far removed from LA at this point. 
She likes to be in nature, wants her daughter, graduates from high school, baby. She's putting herself first and she's getting the hell on, okay? She can't do this city-ish no more. She want to be in Aspen. She want to be around nature. She want to be in Big Bear. She want to do all of these naturist things. And, you know, that's, that's her right. And I do like the changes that Kyle is she's making for herself. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of it does have to do with her just, you know, feeling disconnected from her husband and things of that sort. And, you know, it just happens. So it is what it is. She's getting her mind, body, and soul right. She's placing boundaries and she doing what she want to do. And I actually like that. So they get around the table and they're eating. Kyle pulls out this card game and it's asking, you know, it's like dares and truths and things of that sort. So the first card was asking somebody to lick Kyle's foot. I think it, one of the girls who was sitting next to Kyle said no, but Sutton volunteered to do it. So she went and licked Kyle's big toe. They're laughing and giggling, having a good time. Next card, they're supposed to be practicing their orgasm phase. Then the next card was discuss was discussing whether or not it's appropriate for husbands to communicate with other women on social media. Kyle said no, and that she's had fights with Mauricio over that. She said that women are in his DMs, and on top of that, he's trying to basically follow every woman that follows him, and she doesn't like that. So you know that definitely raises a red flag for the women. Like, oh, okay. So then Kyle asked the ladies, would they date? A woman and she said that she would and Garcella is like this is not the Kyle that I known a good two years ago okay she said that she never been with a girl anything like that and I'm sure it has something to do with a country song aka Morgan okay Kyle is setting the girls up to be prepared for when she leaves Mauricio for Morgan and they won't be surprised okay that's what she's doing she's she's doing it softly okay because now all of a sudden you're here for women and all these things, you're dressing different, you're getting tattoos, girl, we see it coming. Child, then the next one was um, something to do with scissoring a woman. They don't know what scissoring means or Sutton doesn't know what scissoring means. So Kyle goes to Dorit and was like, come on, let's show her what scissoring is. <laughs> Baby scissoring okay listen i'm not into girls i don't want to scissor that look like too much work baby i just can't child next thing you know son got her tongue down the reed's mouth what's happening here okay they're laughing and giggling and having a good time but i'm just like son girl that you looking toes then you put that same tongue in the reed's mouth what is going on but you know it's all funny games and they're enjoying themselves so then um, Kyle talks about how she's having a celebration of life event for her best friend who, you know, unalived herself and um, she's inviting all the girls. <laughs> and she also said that her friend Morgan Wade will be performing. So I guess that'll be her debut in front of all the girls. I don't know if any of the girls have met her yet, but Morgan going to be in attendance and I'm very interested to see how this is going to go. So everybody is back home and we see that Garcelle is making lasagna for her kids. And I said, oh my gosh, it looks so good. So she has her sons for the week and, you know, they're 15, they're in the 10th grade. But at this point, she is realizing that eventually they are going to start preparing to go away for college. So she's feeling the empty nesterness already and she just doesn't know what she's going to do with herself. And, you know, the boys are very nonchalant about it because... At that age, yes, you're ready to get out the house. You're ready to explore and, you know, see life outside of the house that you grew up in and the household that you grew up in. So they are really, you know, just paying her dust when it comes down to, you know, her emotions. And she was like, Jay had the nerve to come to my room the other day and ask if Ashley could spend the night. Like, absolutely not. So Jax was like, yeah, so they can have sex. And she was like, oh, so y'all want to be cute? Okay. Let's talk about the birds and the bees. Let's talk about sex. They don't want to talk about sex. They all squirmy. They laughing and joking and really playing with her. And it's cute to see the relationship that she has with her sons. Um, I like any, I like to watch healthy family dynamics, okay? I don't like disrespectful kids. 
I don't like smart mouth kids. I don't like fucked up parents. I like to see families having a good time and enjoying themselves. And this is what we got here. Marie and PK, they're doing couples therapy because she feels like he's not being sensitive to her PTSD. So she's like, you know, you don't understand. They show flashbacks of him going out of town or preparing to go out of town. And he's like, don't call me when I'm in London in the middle of the night talking about come get me because you pulled that in Mexico. And she was like, yeah, I did. And I can't help that. But guess what? You didn't come get me. So at this point, she feels like her tolerance is low when it comes down to him and, uh, you know, not having any uh, sympathy or empathy, you know, for her and her PTSD. And um, she was like, even with the element of surprise, like I'm trying to tell you about that and your response is defensive. Well, Dorit, when it came down to y'all's anniversary, yes, it was a surprise. And I understand that you were freaking out about the kids and all of that. But at the table, you were not talking about the kids and who were taking care of them. You were in control freak mode talking about your appearance, how how long it takes to create a look and all this extra BS. And it's like, yeah, well, if you want to go that route, baby, just don't expect any any surprises from me if, if I'm going to get this type of response. You don't know how to let go of control and, and keep... Uh, and PK just seems like he's not going with this shit that she's trying to pull because honestly, yes. Like I said, as a person who has PTSD over, you know, traumatic experiences, it's like, I can't control anybody else's emotions. But at the end of the day, I had already came to the conclusion that Dorit is definitely full of shit and putting on when it comes down to this. She's an actress. When I tell you, PK just clocked the hell out of Dorit. So the therapist is trying to get PK to understand that PTSD is formed in anxiety, okay? It doesn't matter if the situation is good or bad. You're just waiting for something bad to happen. You're anxious. You, you just, it's the unknown that just has you hyped up and nervous. And so PK was like, my thing is, I'm trying to understand, since when does PTSD mixed in with high maintenance, okay? Because at the end of the day, just like I said a few clips ago, you, Dorit, you're trying to act like this is all in the name of PTSD when it's just you being a control freak. They even showed the flashbacks. You were mad because it wasn't in the suite. That y'all's um her room wasn't in the suite. You were mad because they didn't have the Beverly Beach bronzer. You were mad because your hair wasn't the way you wanted it. And blah 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 blah. blah. You were mad because of your appearance. And he said when he first met Dorit, he's saying this in his confessional, she wasn't this high maintenance. Now, she real high and he ain't got the maintenance to maintain. <laughs> and so, Dorit is feeling like he's being mean because this wasn't the person that she met initially. Okay, well, y'all both change in relationships. That happens. But at the end of the day, he clocked you because, yes, it's not always PTSD. It sometimes it's just rooted in you being high maintenance and a control freak, girl. So don't even try to pull that shit. That's why we see through you, sis. There are elements I understand. There are also elements that I don't consider are PTSD. I don't. I consider they're more obnoxious. The reality is, is when does high maintenance blend with PTSD? I just had to play that to so y'all can hear what he's saying. Dorit and PK, you know, they get on the same page. Okay, so then we're on the way to Kyle's um, event for her friend. And she's in the car with Teddy. And she is, they're on their way to pick up Morgan. So Morgan gets in the car. Kyle says in her confessional that there's people that she talks to every single day. Teddy and Morgan, they're two people that she, you know, talk to. And they talk about everything together. They've clearly all three been on trips together. Said so Dorit, this is where she been at, okay? Teddy, you you not above Teddy, Dorit. Sorry to tell you that. But, um, yeah, they're on their way. Uh, Kyle had on Morgan's ring, and Morgan called it out. I said, oh, did she buy any of those rings? Did she just so happen to move a ring over to a specific finger? No, I'm kidding. But... Yeah, they're on the way. Uh, they have the party planner there giving Kyle the rundown of what's going to happen with the event. 
child Morgan over there doing mic check and practicing singing a song. Kyle can't even think. She she told this hold on, boy, boy, wait. My girl playing, I gotta listen. So, you know, she all mesmerized and stuff, and she's saying in her confessional that what drew her to Morgan was her lyrics. They're so raw, and, um, you know, she tells it like it is, and that's something that Kyle has always struggled with, or uh, putting it all out there. And so, at this point, Kyle is just very nervous because she has to deliver a speech in the name of her best friend, and she's just nervous to do it. Especially because Portia, she sent what she was going to say to Portia. And Portia was like, she don't understand it. So, I'm sure that didn't help her anxiety. But Kyle was real nervous and she questioned whether or not she can do it. So, Garcelle gets there, right? And you see her in her confessional. She's doing this. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. It's just the net. The net net herself, Teddy. So, they do the flashback of um garcelle's confessional and the producers asking why doesn't she like Ted teddy and she was like i don't know she's just annoying for no reason she's like a little gnat and so when she sees teddy you know she greets her and she gives her a hug and teddy is like the gnat is here like girl it's not good to even claim yourself as a gnat even though garcelle called you that change your ways that's what that means okay stop being a damn gnat because you're being that gnat right now but um yeah so you know, we see uh, Kyle's friend who um, is no longer with us. We see her her mother, and her mother is very emotional, and she's hugging Kyle. And uh, her friend's name is Lorene, I think. Lorene's daughters are there, too. And, you know, her mom is very emotional. Obviously, she lost the child. And so she's grateful for Kyle doing this, and then she asked if Mauricio was going to be there. No, he's not there. He's out of town on business. And Garcella's talking to Kyle, and she's realizing that, you know, she's doing all of this by herself. And uh, Kyle's confessional, she said that, you know, had it been a few years ago, she would have definitely heavily relied on Mauricio. But again, the disconnect, obviously, um, she's learned to, you know, do without him, probably because he's always on the damn road. So Garcelle is like, basically in her confessional, that it's very telling, you know, that he's not here. And it is like, damn, you know how big of a deal this is? Kyle had this woman in her will to take care of everything. You would think that you would be here for your wife. But I guess business comes first. So then we see Crystal Garcelle and Annalise. Okay, I'm going to keep calling her that at this point because she getting on my damn nerves. So they all sitting down and she has the nerve to say, all right, y'all know Sutton best. The whole esophagus thing. Like, what's going on with that? I've searched my medical books. I've spoken to EMTs and um, other anesthesiologists and basically nobody has ever heard of a narrow esophagus. Garcelle said, and why do you care? Hello, like, why do you care? Because this don't got nothing to do with you. So then Anna Lise was like, what she say? I don't even know what she said, but basically she tried to say maybe Sutton had an eating disorder and that, you know, once you, you know, do a lot of throwing up, it can cause scar tissue in the throat. So maybe that's the thing. And you already know Crystal has an eating disorder or had an eating disorder. And that's not going to sit right with her. So she's like, so now you're implying that Sutton has an eating disorder? And Elise, in her thin-ass tracks, had the nerve to say, I never said that. Yes, you did. And, and and don't even play. Don't play on Crystal's intelligence or the viewers because you playing games. Trying to make it seem like you never said that. That's the whole reason why Crystal brought it up. She, you know what? At this point, Garcelle had to get up and was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. Okay? Because why, why do you care? The fact that you got on this show and your storyline is basically Sutton and her narrow esophagus. Sun ain't even stunning you. She hasn't stunned, she hasn't paid you attention past the point of you asking her about the esophagus. Like, girl, come on. You you pressed about somebody who ain't even pressed about you. And I'm gonna need you to stop bench pressing. Speaking of pressing, because I'm like, girl, them arms, I mean, I love me a fit person, but them arms is looking a little too strong, sis. I'm gonna need you to tone it down a little bit because it's it's not looking that flattering. I don't know if it was the outfit that she had on, maybe her shoulders is a little bit broad or something, but I was like Them bra arms, um, them bra shoulders, strong arms, and them thin tracks was not a good combo. You talking all that shit about Sutton, sis? Not too much. 
So Sutton is talking to Doree and she's talking about how, you know, basically her father unalived himself as well at the age of 64. And, you know, she was trying to figure it out. And, you know, and she was like, you know, at some point you just have to basically just let it go. And uh, as she's talking about that, Garcelle comes up. Garcelle was so black. I love that. Garcelle came up and said, girl, and at least over there talking about you. Son said, uh, not today, okay? I am the ambassador of, you know, the organization that's sponsoring Kyle's event. She said, uh-uh, we're not doing that. Like, you know, she already dealing with this whole unaliving event and it's making her bring up thoughts about her dad and stuff. Not today. So then you got Dorit and her confessional talking about, you know, Garcelle is lighting the match and basically hiding her hand. And I was like, it's very rich of you to say that about her when we can rewind back to the weed party. Didn't you go back and tell Kyle what Sutton said before Kyle got to the table? Um, okay. Yeah, shut up. So, um, yeah, y'all know me. I'm trying to get my emotions together. So, um, <clears throat> Kyle does her speech and she's talking about, you know, the loss of her friends and you know, all these things about how they didn't like each other. And, you, you know, just having a better understanding of their relationship. And she said that in her confessional that um, two days before her friend passed, she told her that she needs to basically appreciate her marriage. And, you know, obviously they're having marital issues. So Kyle feels like she's letting her friend down. But since her friend's passing, you know, it's making her realize that life is too short. And she really wants to focus on being around people who are there for her that appreciate her time and that she actually wants to be around. I said, Mauricio, she is done with you. And that is unfortunate, but hey, it is what it is. So Kyle's put herself first, rightfully so. And so um, what really got me, because Morgan got up and she sang a song, and I will, I will say that, you know, her music does sound good. And uh, what really got me was Garcelle and her confessional where she was saying that, you know, the thing with death is that it's just, it's just so final and losing her mom, you know, as time went on, she was basically saying that she, you never hear from that person again. You never get a call or text and receive them again. Like that is the hard part. And that like really just rattled me, but I was able to maintain and your girl didn't drop any tears. Yeah. It was definitely sad. And what I did peep, though, what I did peep, oh, yeah, Dorit did talk about how uh, she initially met Morgan about two years ago, and they were in London, and Morgan uh, stood out like a sore thumb. And that was the last time that they all were together as a group, because remember, um, Dorit's issue or concern was the fact that they haven't been on trips together. They usually do couple things, and that's the last time that she's seen Mauricio and Kyle as a couple, you know, really. And she said that that's how rumors start. I said, oh, well, you ain't helping telling stories, ma'am. Anyway, um, it was a good episode. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about it. I mean, it, we didn't get any ounce of Erica Jane in this episode, but it, it was good. You know, it was good was for what it was. But uh, let's get down in the comments and talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I will see y'all in the next one, and I'm about to eat and then come back for Miami. Bye.